Cast iron is an iron carbon alloy with a higher carbon content than steel, along with silicon and sometimes other metals, depending on the desired properties. The percentages vary. Wikipedia says usually 1.8 to 4 weight percent carbon and 1 to 3 weight percent silicon. Some common metals added are manganese, nickel, chromium, tin, copper, molybdenum, titanium, vanadium, or zirconium. I'm primarily an organic chemist and my knowledge on metallurgy is very limited, so I'm not going to say much more about it to avoid embarrassing myself. The reaction is very simple. Iron and sulfuric acid react equimolarly to make ferrous sulfate and hydrogen. The carbon and silicon present won't dissolve and other metals present probably will. Ferrous sulfate is used as a precursor to other iron compounds in electroplating baths, as a food supplement for iron deficiency, as a reducing agent, and more. Historically, it was known as green vitriol or copperas, copperas, I don't know, and used to make iron gall ink for dyeing leather, as a dye fixative for textiles, and most notably for the production of sulfuric acid. The thermolysis of ferrous sulfate produces ferric oxide, sulfur dioxide, and sulfur trioxide, the latter reacting with water to make sulfuric acid. I don't really have much use for it, but it's always good to have a soluble source of iron on hand. The main thing I can think of using it for is to decompose organic peroxides that form in ethers that are stored in the presence of oxygen, and then the reaction accelerating if exposed to light. This is one of several methods used to decompose organic peroxides and is based on the reducing properties of ferrous sulfate. Ferrous sulfate forms a bunch of hydrates, the most common ones being the monohydrate and heptahydrate. I'll most likely be left with the monohydrate or the anhydrous form. I decided not to isolate it as a heptahydrate because it's deliquescent, meaning if you leave some exposed to air, it'll absorb atmospheric water vapor until it forms a small puddle. This is a very annoying property, and I avoid these kinds of substances whenever possible. Anyway, on to the video. So here I have a little cast iron pan that I've melted lead in and done other chemistry with, which has rendered it unfit for cooking. I also left it outside once, and it rusted, obviously, and cracked in a few places, so I can't really use it for anything anymore. Instead, for your viewing pleasure, I decided to dissolve it in sulfuric acid, 200 mils of which are on the left, with the 155 gram cast iron pan on the right. The discoloration in the beaker is residual crud that the sulfuric acid ate at, but there will be a negligible effect, if any, on the cast iron dissolution. So this is a ceramic dish of water with the cast iron pan on my beat up hot plate, which I'm adding the sulfuric acid to. Generates some heat, but it really doesn't do much. Uh, the rust forms a sort of protective layer, but once the solution is hot enough, like here, it'll dissolve and expose the fresh cast iron. Reaction mixture quickly turns dark green because that's how ferrous sulfate behaves in aqueous media, forming the green aqua complex. I'll be showing the progression of the dissolution, but other than that, all I'm doing is heating and replenishing the water as it's evaporated. A few times, I add a little more sulfuric acid, in total probably about 200 milliliters, in addition to the first 200 milliliters, but sulfuric acid is cheap for me, so I don't really care that much. In total, the dissolution took about 20 hours. It turns black because there's graphite in cast iron, and as the iron dissolves, it's knocked loose and is suspended in the solution. I use my phone to record videos so I don't do complete time lapses of filtrations because they end up being like 40 minutes real time. I do still have the phone I used before my current one but it only records up to 1080p rather than the 4k this one does. If you want to see full time lapses of filtrations and whatever else I might record that's time lapse worthy in future videos and wouldn't mind them being 1080p, let me know in the comments and I will use my old phone to record them. After the bulk of the cast iron is dissolved, I let it cool and move on to filtering. I splashed some of the solution out of the dish one of the times I added water to it and spilled some while transferring it from the dish to the plastic container that I poured into this funnel, and the yield will suffer because of this. 
Once I fully filter the solution, I need to separate the water-soluble ferrous sulfate from the insoluble graphite and other stuff. I do this by pouring boiling water on the filter as the solubility of ferrous sulfate in water increases with the temperature. The filtration is slow enough that during it the water does cool a little bit and doesn't boil in the filter flask from the reduced pressure. I pour the filtrate directly into the same ceramic dish from the dissolution after rinsing it out and boil it down to isolate the ferrous sulfate. I take the crud left on the funnel and add it to a beaker containing water, which I boil to extract any residual soluble matter. This is the filtrate boiling down, and then once it's about half of the original volume, I let it cool overnight, and this is what it looks like. The cool looking green crystals are the heptahydrate that precipitated when it was cold enough, which is under like between 60 and 64 degrees C, while under those is either the anhydrous form, monohydrate, or tetrahydrate that precipitated when the solution was hotter. They're all white, so I don't really know which form it is. It could be any or all of them. I added denatured alcohol to the solids in the jar, the supernatant being in the plastic container. Filter all this and rinse out the containers with denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol I'm using because it's cheap and ferrous sulfate is practically insoluble in ethanol and apparently methanol as well. Just letting the heptahydrate sit in the jar with denatured alcohol overnight dehydrated it to some extent, as you can see from the decreased green coloration in the solid. I transfer the filtered ferrous sulfate to the jar and fill it up about halfway with denatured alcohol. Off camera, I boil the filtrate down a little more to maximize my recovery of ferrous sulfate. I suspend this in a water bath and boil it until about half of the alcohol evaporates. This serves as a much simpler dehydration step than thermal dehydration, which requires a temperature of at least 300 C. Back to filtering the insoluble crap for now. The filtrate is a very pale green, so there was some remaining ferrous sulfate. In the beaker, stuck to the magnetic stir bar, is the cast iron that didn't dissolve. Then I filter the cooled alcohol and ferrous sulfate mixture, crush and move the powder to a container, put it in my desiccator with a dish of sulfuric acid above it, and connect it to my vacuum aspirator pump. I realize this isn't the typical way a desiccator is arranged. Usually the desiccant is in the bottom and the substance to be desiccated is above it, but there's only residual alcohol to be removed and there's so much ferrous sulfate that this is the best way of making everything fit. This is an extremely unsafe and dumb way to test if the desiccator is evacuated. Don't do this even though it's a neat demonstration of the strength of a vacuum. Off camera, I boiled the insoluble crud in approximately 400 mils of like 15% hydrochloric acid to thoroughly dissolve the remaining cast iron and whatever else might be soluble in hydrochloric acid but not sulfuric acid. It's probably yellow because somehow during the dissolution, the iron was oxidized and formed ferric chloride, which is yellow. Ferrous chloride is green, so it can't be that. Now we're back to filtering the alcohol, sulfuric acid, and ferrous sulfate soup, which, after boiling down as much as I could without the bumping in and out of hand, has taken on a lovely brown color and ethereal smell. The color is likely due to the formation of some tarry byproducts. Shout out extractions in ire from the acid catalyzed dehydration of the alcohols that happened to occur when I boiled the solution down. The ethereal smell is from, wait for it, 
the ethers that formed in the same reaction. So this is the ferrous sulfate retained on the funnel, which I do the same thing as earlier with, adding denatured alcohol to and boiling on a water bath. Here's the filtration. Here's the ferrous sulfate, slightly off color, but that's okay. I desiccated it the same way as earlier. Here's all the ferrous sulfate combined. 331 grams total, which is an 88.41% yield if it's anhydrous or a 79.04% yield if it's the monohydrate. Boiling the insoluble crap in hydrochloric acid reduced the weight from 17.37 grams to 15.93 grams, which is a little above 10% of the weight of the 155 gram pan. I calculated the yield by subtracting the initial insoluble 17.37 gram weight from the 155 gram pan weight. This was a project done out of curiosity, and I spilled some of the iron and acid soup twice during the process, so I can't really be surprised about the yield. I am curious why there was so much insoluble stuff. I expected like 6 to 7 weight percent tops from the carbon and silicon, but I was evidently wrong. I could do some tests on the residue to at least give me an idea, but I already put a lot of time into the project and I decided to call it quits. Thank you for watching. If you want to, like, comment, and or subscribe, and I'll see you next time.